Montel. Let's, let's be blunt with Montel. When we talk about everything and anything cannabis and try to see if we can give you information, help you navigate this space as you're making choices as you enter into the cannabis wellness space for yourself. And today, we're really excited about our guests that we have today because we've got a, this is a, a two for, a two for one in a sense. But our guests today are best friends. They're co-owners of Treat Yourself, a company that makes healthy cannabis-infused products geared towards women. The company offers a variety of cannabis products from health and well-being to everything from creams to CBD tinctures to oral care products to deodorant. And they started their company back in 2015 to revolutionize a healing and medical plant that's often been portrayed in a destructive way. Please welcome Leani Posad and Cindy Pinzon to the show. Well, Cindy, did I say your last name right? Yes, Pinzone. <laughs> Pinzone, okay. i me make sure I got it right. Thanks, ladies, for being a part of the show. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Yeah. You both, this is a, why do I have the two of you on? So I know my listeners are probably wondering why you have the both of you on at the same time, because these ladies really, you know, you, you, you had a long journey coming to the cannabis industry, did you not? Very much so. Yeah. And it's, it's still a journey to this day. Um, but it's very fitting that you have us here together because you know, we're childhood best friends and we've basically been doing everything together you know, side by side since launching the company in 2015. So it makes well, sense uh, to have us both here. <laughs> well, let's start a little bit before that, because let's see, I'll start with you, Leonie. You mm-hmm. you come to this industry really in, a, I want to say, in a strange way, because mm-hmm. uh, you were in an industry that was the antithesis of cannabis before you got involved in this. You were a, uh, you worked with the police department, did you not? Yes, I did. I worked as a police dispatcher for just shy of a decade, actually. And that's that's kind of an unusual transformation from working for the police department for a decade then getting into the cannabis business. Why don't you back up and tell me how that happened? Yeah, so, um, you know, I mostly answered 911 calls there. And for the most part, I really enjoyed that type of work. I enjoyed helping people in moments of crisis. But there were a lot of workplace issues that I was having. There were a lot of um, tension in the department, and I was really just frustrated with the work environment. So I started seeking out other job options, and I was really into this idea of self-help and healing others as well. So I became certified as a yoga instructor, and my plan was to leave the police department and teach yoga. And um, I also knew that because I was so comfortable in that job there, and I'd worked for the department for so long, that I was going to have to move quite a distance to avoid the temptation of staying or going back. So I planned to move from San Francisco from Southern California. And I called up my childhood best friend, Cindy, to let her know my plan. And very coincidentally, uh, she had just become certified as a health coach. And she informed me that she was also planning to move to San Francisco. So, So, okay. So the two of you say, okay, yeah, let's go out to San Francisco and see what we can do in the health and wellness business together. Yes. But then you had this friend, Cindy, who, and Cindy, why don't you back up and tell me a little bit about your past now, while your best friend is a cop, you were a person who kind of dabbled a little bit in cannabis, did you not? Yes, definitely. Um, so I, I started using cannabis when I was in college, and I had grown a deep appreciation for the plant and it was always part of, you know, my my lifestyle, whether it was to wind down in the evening, to use it for pain, you know, before working out, whatever. It was just part of my lifestyle. And I always used it as, you know, this positive thing because, you know, growing up, Leonie and I both experienced um, cannabis in a negative light in terms of, you know, you know, like the D.A.R.E. program and things like that that made us fear cannabis. Um, But anyway, let me jump forward to I became certified as a health coach. And, you know, as a health coach, I was very passionate about using food as medicine. That was something that, you know, I would try to convince everyone of. (laughs) Um, Including your friend Leonie, right? Yes, exactly. Just food as medicine and plants as medicine and cannabis was one of those. Um, So I, you know, this was, let's say, 2015. Um, dispensaries were popping up in California. I was really excited to go and check one out. Cannabis was finally being spoken about 
you know, in a more positive light, people were talking about how it was beneficial for cancer patients, people going through chemo and all of those things. So I very excitedly went into my first dispensary. I was looking around, hoping to buy some, some yummy treats to enjoy later, but I literally couldn't find not one thing that I was comfortable putting into my body because of the other ingredients, not necessarily the cannabis, but, you know, it was all Rice Krispies treats and brownies and, you know, just sugar mixed with sugar and topped with more sugar, which for me as a health coach, that was something, you know, you want to avoid if you're trying to heal from anything related to inflammation or things like that. So in that moment, I knew that you know, in order to elevate the cannabis industry, there had to be brands that were going to create products that were healthy in nature. That's something that someone like me could purchase and consume. Um, I knew, you know, there were more cannabis users out there that wanted healthy options. So I saw an opportunity. um, And I also wanted to create something to a brand that we can use as a platform to educate not just about cannabis, but about, again, using food as medicine and why the other ingredients are also important. So I pitched this to Leonie because, you know, we wanted a health and wellness company. So. (laughs) And Leonie, here comes your friend saying, look, I'm thinking that uh, we ought to think about this cannabis world. And you went, what? (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. You know, I was fully behind this concept of food as medicine. I fully believed that. But in my mind still, cannabis was this really ugly, dangerous, scary drug. I didn't see it as an herb or as a food. I saw it as something illegal. Um, So I had to do a lot of my own research to really even get comfortable with the idea of trying it for myself. I had never tried it. Um, And it took me about three months of deep research to finally decide to just try it for myself. And I was really shocked by what the experience was for me versus what I had built it up to be my entire life. And I knew that Cindy and I really had an opportunity to demystify and debunk a lot of the mistruths about cannabis by creating this business. And I mean, it's very interesting because, I mean, I I want to go back to what Cindy was saying about the fact that for the longest time, and right now, even now, when you go into dispensaries, um, the majority of the cannabis, especially THC products, Mm-hmm. are sugar-filled, sugar-filled, sugar-filled. Yes. And we're and still we're, when calling medicine. Yeah, we're trying to call that medicine. And then at the same time, you know, people don't even pay attention to the extraction techniques that are used mm-hmm. for some of the main ingredient that goes in. And steeplers are still using, in some places, butane, which is absolutely ridiculous to me. I mean, if you're not going to go out and put your mouth around a, the exhaust pipe of a car, why would I? take and put something like that in my, in my stomach to begin right, with. Right, right. Um, so you decided, okay, let's come up with a line of products. And, and you know, now you're, you, you did you go to a manufacturing partner or you were manufacturing these in your own kitchen? We were doing everything in our own kitchen. Um, we did a ton of research and we already – ate so healthy ourselves that we had quite a few ideas up our sleeves as far as what type of products we wanted to create. But yes, we went the very labor intensive route of creating everything in our own kitchen. <laughs> with, with your own yeah. formulations and your own. With our own yeah. formulations. Yes. And to your point, um, it allowed us to be very specific with the ingredients we were using, whether it be, you know, the coconut oil we were sourcing or the THC oil, we were very, um, careful about, you know, how these things were sourced. And, and you were using now, yeah. all of your products. One thing that's, a, that's a, you know, I guess a common denominator in every one of your products is that they are all made from natural products. They are mm-hmm. created gluten-free, right? They are yes. uh, vegan, refined sugar. And um, you try your best to do a – well, I guess a combination CBD and THC together, right? Talk, talk to me about that philosophy. Yes. So um, another thing about edibles is that they can often get a bad rap because it's very easy to overconsume THC and have an uncomfortable experience. Yeah. Well, so, once, it, once, it is, once it's in, you can't take it out. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it's a delayed onset. So a lot of people who are inexperienced will take, you know, let's say a small amount, but then within an hour, they'll continue consuming more because they're not feeling the effects. And before you know it, it's too late and they've overconsumed. 
and you know you start experiencing some uncomfortable things like paranoia or anxiety. And um, through our research, we discovered that when you consume CBD with THC, um, you can really uh, diminish those negative side effects and have a much more pleasant experience, even if you're on the upper threshold of consuming more THC than you, you should. So and we well, developed... Think, mm -hmm. Okay, and I think one of the things we're going to just, just inject there is the fact that, you know, we know that broader spectrum and cannabinoids do work in an entourage effect. And so, mm -hmm. you know, especially when they are eaten, and people don't seem to get that. There's a lot of people who, you know, run into dispensaries in different states when they're on vacation, and they'll grab a product, and, of course, they are, you know, at the whim of some bud tender who says, oh, no, this is mild, mm -hmm. where, you know, the bud tender is a person who's getting high, you know, 24 hours a day every day. And, mm -hmm. Yes. You know, the, the, the consumer doesn't understand that it's going to hit you differently based on your your, you know, body weight, your mass, your, your fat your mass index, everything about you individually and your metabolism is Absolutely. going to be a main player mm -hmm. in this. Yeah, we all have our own minimum effective dose. And what Cindy and I found early on when we were going to dispensaries is that we were educating bud tenders ourselves and inviting them to try much lower doses than they had been with edibles because they had this mindset that the more they took, the better. And so we were able to kind of reverse that with a lot of them and say, just try five milligrams of THC with CBD and see how that makes you feel. And so many of them were shocked to see that they still felt something, although it was very different than the 100 milligrams of THC they had been mm -hmm. consuming prior to that. Right. And yeah, you know, and you, for us... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, God was saying, well, and your products are wide ranging. You don't just produce edibles, but you produce things like under eye creams and serums and and uh, uh, also uh, salves, um, various products, correct? Why don't you talk a little bit about your product lineup? Yeah, so when we first launched, we launched with our Pop-Tarts in the cannabis space where we're limited to selling only in California, only to dispensaries. But we always knew that we wanted to grow and expand outside of just the cannabis space. We saw ourselves as a wellness brand and we wanted to reach the mainstream audience as well. So, you know, as our company has grown, we've evolved our product offerings and actually uh, so first, after the Pop-Tarts, we went into our topical lines, again, that were CBD and THC sold just in dispensaries, um, but that got us to learn a lot about the topical application of cannabis and the various cannabinoids. So uh, we decided in October of 2018, so just, just over a year ago, we launched our personal care products and our beauty products. And like you said, that ranges from natural deodorants to, you know, the under eye serums and things like that. And um, this has allowed us to really expand uh, our reach in terms of who we can sell to, because now we're allowed to sell online and, you know, ship to different states um, because we don't use um, THC in any of these products, products specifically. Um, we do use different cannabinoids. Um, in some of them to showcase still the healing power of, you know, CBD, for example, because that's the one that most people are familiar with nowadays and seeking. Um, but we also offer products that don't have any cannabis, again, because we, we want to educate people about various plants and herbs. Health and wellness. Enjoy. Yes, exactly, exactly. Exactly. Because that's what ca cannabis is, you know, to us, it shouldn't be this big separation. And I think over time, it will cross over and you'll just see it as this wellness ingredient. Um, but right now it's like cannabis is its own micro, you know, industry or macro really, but uh, we see it as part of just health and wellness as a whole. What has been some of your biggest challenges to date? So really um, just running a business. I mean, um, we both started Treat Yourself with this really clear vision and a really strong mission that we developed together. Um, but neither of us have any business experience or background. Um, so we've had a lot of tough lessons along the way and we're still learning as we go. Um, and right now we're currently facing the challenge of scaling our business for mass production. Well, Leoni, talk to me a little bit about, you know, what's been the, the I don't know, the views or, or have any of your, your former peers had anything to say about the business that you're in now? 
Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They've had oh, quite a lot to say. Really? <laughs> um, okay. Yes, I mean, it's been very wide ranging, but um, I will say I've been very fortunate. I have um, really strong relationships with a lot of them, and it's been pretty wonderful to see how supportive they've been and how open they've been to changing their own perspective or um, at least hearing what I have to say on the topic. It's, it's been really inspiring, quite honestly, um, from, you know, a group of, or industry that can all, often be so, you know, strict or black and white. Absolutely. So again, um, now because you do provide such a wide ranging you know, a group of products. Why don't you give a give out a website so if people want to reach out to you and find out more information they can. What's your website? Our website is treat yourself inc. That's I N C dot com. And you can also find us on Instagram at Treat Yourself Inc. Treat Yourself Inc. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then of course on uh, that website they'll be able to find a, a list of all the products that you actually offer. Yes, definitely. And we're very active on social media and, you know, it's right now we're, we're basically the, the two main employees of the company. So it's very easy to reach out to us. If you guys have any questions, um, we're always here to answer to the best of our ability or to point you in the right direction. You know, you have a, you have a statement on your website that says, uh, we hope to inspire women to indulge in a little self love every day. And first off, what was this born in? And how does your company help people do that? Well, I'm sorry, what was the first part of the, the question? It, it, you know, in, on your website, you, you say that you hope to inspire women to indulge in a little self-love every day. And I was saying, how does your company work at doing that? And, you know, um, really, it, it's an inspiring message. So um, what do you do to try to help women do that? Yes, definitely. So that really came from a place of, you know, we wanted, we felt like we can relate to a lot of women who, in being so busy, being the caregivers to others, that we often forget to take care of ourselves. So, you know, we, we obviously being a caregiver, it's a beautiful thing, um, but we also want to make sure that we make time for ourselves, and we want to inspire women to make that time for themselves as well. And, you know, to us, self-care is a form of self-love, and Self-care doesn't have to be, you know, these huge indulgences. Yes, a massage is great, but, you know, choosing a low-dose edible over a night of binge drinking could be a form of self-care or, you know, the simple act of washing your face at night before bed, that routine, that ritual, you can make that into a self-care practice. So we feel that by creating enjoyable products that lend to an enjoyable experience, we hope that that can really help women to connect to themselves and to make them feel that they are doing something for themselves, just taking that moment to really appreciate and enjoy the moment. Wow. So what are, what are a few of your biggest selling products that you have right now? I, mean, I guess that would be in two questions, because one would be, what's your biggest selling THC infused product, which you're selling only in uh, California, and then what are your biggest selling you know, non-THC products? Yeah, so our biggest seller of the THC products was our Pop-Tarts. Um, and it, like we said, it's the combination of the CBD and THC, and they were low-dosed. So those were a really big hit because they were able to appeal to people with dietary restrictions, but also people who were scared off of edibles. Yeah, and in terms of the, the skincare, um, we recently launched an under-eye serum, which is infused with... Um, a lot of great ingredients, including CBD. And we've gotten such great feedback from that. It's uh, it's great for like, you know, cosmetically brightening your under eyes, reducing fine lines and wrinkles. Um, but we've recently had a woman reach out who had suffered from Bell's palsy and it's actually helped with, um, one of her eyes was droopy um, because of it. And she, you know, excitedly sent us a, a nice message through Instagram, letting us know that she now, sees a huge difference and that her eyes have evened out. So those just messages like that, it's so encouraging and it keeps us motivated because there are a lot of ups and downs and, you know, in this industry, especially with regulations always changing and feels like some days you're taking, you know, one step forward and two steps back, but these messages really help keep us motivated and remember, you know, why we're doing this. 
And your products, again, your THC products are only in California right now. What's the what's it looking like in the future for expansion? What are you guys thinking about? So we've actually discontinued our THC products in California because we weren't able to afford the licensing um, that are required to legally sell in dispensaries. Um, and we really individually want to support the regulated market. So we didn't decide, you know, to illegally sell our products. And so we had to discontinue our THC line. But uh, we are planning a very uh, a move very soon to Nevada, where we hope to begin producing our THC products and offering them in dispensaries in Nevada soon. Nevada, okay. And then how about any other? And, and you're also looking to expand your production capabilities, is that right? Absolutely, yes. Um, we've seen a big growth in our sales, and we can no longer produce in our tiny kitchen and living room anymore, so we need a formal manufacturing space that we're really excited to be moving into. And that's going to also be in Nevada? Yes, correct. Okay, when, when, do, you, uh, when do you think that'll happen? So to give the listeners an opportunity to think if they're headed out to Vegas, they may be able to find some of your products. <laughs> well, Definitely. <laughs> We should be uh, moved in January, and uh, hopefully we'll be on the shelves there within a few months from there. So look for us in spring of 2020. <laughs> now, now, I mean, and, and, you know, there's a lot of women who are listening probably right now, tuned in, listening to this, young women, who are thinking, hmm, interesting, but this has got to be tough. What kind of advice would you give to them about, you know, starting down the path of a cannabis company? You know, I would say look at the industry as a whole. And get creative. Um, there's a lot of space still for a lot of different products and services that aren't offered yet. Um, it's very new still as a regulated industry. And there's so much opportunity and room for creativity. Yeah, and just to add to that, I'd say, you know, reach out to brands that you feel are in alignment with, you know, something similar to your vision. Um, because we can all support each other. You don't have to just jump straight in starting your own business. You can help support someone else's business and learn from them, learn, you know, get some hands-on experience before just diving in and doing it all by yourself. And I mean, that might be interesting. That's a, a, a call out to anybody in the Nevada area. Could, could people apply mm -hmm. to come in and see if they can get some employment with you? Yes, exactly. Yes. Please. <laughs> I say and they should just reach out to you on the treatyourselfinc.com, send you a letter and explain why you think that they'd be a good asset, why, why you'd be a good asset to ladies, right? Yes, please reach out to us. We are always looking for people who are passionate and who really want to learn and be hands-on. Absolutely. I can't say thank you enough, ladies, for joining us today. This has been really eye-opening. and. and and I think a, a, an opportunity to not just talk about your business individually, but to, to also show that, you know, friends can come together and, and pull off something that seems insurmountable. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so, and to all our listeners out there, I want to thank you all for joining us for this episode of Let's Be Blunt. Make sure you tune in to the next one. <laughs>